England and the United States, a declamation by Chauncey M. Depew, summarized and analyzed by Daniel Nelson using soapstone. As for speaker, the speaker of this declamation is Chauncey M. Depew, an attorney for Cornelius Vanderbilt's railroad interests, president of the New York Central Railroad System, and a United States Senator from New York from 1899 to 1911. He went to Yale University, was a Republican, and wrote nine known books on the subjects of America, Americans, public speaking, and himself. Over occasion. The occasion in this declamation was during 1887. It was the 50th anniversary of Victoria, Queen of England's reign, and the, and the 100th anniversary of the United States Constitution and its existence. A for audience. The audience of this declamation is most likely American patriots, those who appreciate their national history as Americans. The audience is also one that most likely feels disparity, aloofness, or mild hostility towards England as an empire. P for purpose. The purpose of this declamation was to create a slight feeling of superiority to the British Empire. As Britain was the encircling empire, America was the new democratic star, with Washington as the leader. And if America, according to Depew, so followed the greatness and famed attributes of this great man, America would continue to beginning quote, live so long as it reveres the memory and emulates the virtues of George Washington, end quote. As for subject, the subject of the declamation is George Washington and America versus Victoria and England. While the few acknowledges the grand power of the British Empire, he emphasizes the attributes of George Washington and aligns them with how America is the new democratic and independent star responsible to and obedient only to God and law. T for tone. The tone of the overall declamation is one of national pride and patriotism. While it does acknowledge the positive attributes of England as an empire and Victoria as its queen, it reveals the attributes of George Washington, if followed by Americans, as much more admirable. It is respectful to England, but revering to Washington. The rhetorical strategy strategies, excuse me, were many and varied. Here are a few notable examples. A brief anecdote was used at the beginning of the declamation, entailing the story of Victoria, Queen of England's 50th anniversary. Beginning quote. In the summer of 1887, Victoria, Queen of England, and Empress of India celebrated with imposing ceremony the 50th anniversary of her reign. End quote. There were also historical references to figures such as George Washington, Victoria, Queen of England, Alexander of Macedon and others. Personification from blind obedience. Metaphor and personification. Beginning quote. The scenes of the fifth act of the grand drama are changing with the world as its stage and all races and tongues the audience. End quote. Also, anaphora and repetition are used in the end paragraph. Beginning quote. His patience under provocation, his lofty courage when all others despair his magnanimity to his defamers and generosity to his foes, his ambition for his country and unselfishness for himself have combined to make him, by the unanimous judgment of the world, the foremost figure in history. He was the strongest because the best balanced, the fullest rounded, the most even and the most self-masterful of men. The incarnation of common sense and the republic will live so long as it reveres the memory and emulates the virtues of George Washington. This has been a declamation s summarized and analyzed by Daniel Nelson called England and the United States by Chauncey M. Depew. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye.